So a long time ago, someone asked a question. The answer's been provided many times, but we'll provide it again because we're that awesome. So you ready for this one? Here it is. It's one of the more challenging ones in the field, yet it's also simple. What is the difference between methodological behaviorism and radical behaviorism? I can tell you in one simple answer, it's because radical behaviorism is radical! And not in the terms of, that, that was weird, but not in terms of, <laughs> not in terms of cool radical, but radical as in different. Different than what? Methodological behaviorism. That's what we're different then. So let me let me explain. Okay, um, whew, I gotta slow down a little bit because I'm getting kind of excited. Methodological behaviorism is the extreme rigid focus on only overt events. If I can't see it, smell it, taste it, or hear it, it didn't happen or feel it. Um, so in other words, methodological behaviorism is what people often think of when they think of behaviorism, right? They think this, this, this absolutely rigid focus on only observable events. Skinner says, no, uh -uh. he's dead. So he doesn't say it anymore, but you get my point. Skinner said, all right, that's what he said. That's, that's all he said, and that's all you have to remember about Skinner is he did that. I highly doubt he ever did that once in his life, but if he did, um, awesome. Um, if not, then I guess I have to just speak like Skinner spoke and said, well, we need to focus on observable events, but we also have to focus on behavior. And since the behavior that happens inside the organism is none less the behavior, it just is observable only with an audience of one. That was closer to my Skinner impression, although I never personally heard, heard him speak. I just figured he would be kind of monotonic like that. And, you know, I've listened to the videos anyway. Sorry, I just, I digress. But the important point is, let tell me what I'm thinking. <laughs> I can tell you what I'm thinking, but you can't. Skinner says, what I'm thinking is just as valid as any other behavior about me waving my hands or jumping, wiggling, or doing whatever. That's a behavior. So is thinking. So is feeling. So is emoting. Having emotions, right? So thinking, feeling, emoting, those things are countable as behavior in the field or in the philosophy of radical behaviorism. They don't count in methodological behaviorism. Hence, Skinner's behavior, behaviorism is radical. It is different than traditional behaviorism. Now, some of you are going, well, no, Skinner never said that. But it, actually, no, Skinner did, was totally fine, completely okay with all these private events. He even used the term private events. They're private. They're observable by one person, which reduces your ability to have any sort of reliable observation of them uh, or, uh, and so on and so forth. You can't have any inner observer agreement but you can observe it with one person, and that would be you. You can observe your thoughts, you can observe your emotions, you can observe your feelings. You can observe your thinking, which was thoughts. Getting a bit circular here, I apologize, but you get the idea. The problem is, no one else can double check you. So the validity of what you say might be in question, but the fact that you're observing your own actions is not. And that is what the core difference between radical and methodological behaviorism is. Don't get them confused. I implore you to like and subscribe to our channel. It is extremely important that you do so, especially since you want this content. If you've watched this far, that means you like what we're doing. So please like, subscribe, share.